we like grieving? Is there a way to like that sadness that you feel where you just can't get out of bed and you don't know what to do? Can I like it? I mean, if you can figure out how to like it, I want you to tell me the the secret, <laughs> right? So it's kind of like, you know, not everybody likes their vegetables, but it's probably a good idea to have them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the thing about this is, is that if we think about emotions as information, for example, mm -hmm. we can't amputate any of our emotions and expect to be whole. Yeah, We cannot true. do that, right? We don't have to like them. Okay. They do not have to be the popular girl. They absolutely yeah. do not. But it's sort of like saying, like, if we think about our organs and I say to you, well, Mindy, here's the thing. Like, I really like my lungs. They're cute. <laughs> You know, well, lungs aren't cute, but OK, they're slimy. They're, they're, OK, so they're they're just slimy cute. I don't know. There's yeah. something about my lungs. They're just so uh, cool. No, I love that you but, picked that organ. But if I say to you, but Mindy, I really think my liver is de classe. My liver is sleazy. My liver is just not, not my cup of tea. You would be like, what are you talking about? You can't amputate, you know, certain mm -hmm. organs because you just don't like them. Oh, you know, they're there for a reason. Bad. And so when we think about our emotions that way, I think it's sort of, it helps us get curious. And I know you and I are so similar this way. Curiosity to me is the fuel of creativity. It's the fuel of innovation. It's the fuel of healing. Without curiosity, you can't have any of those things. And so yeah. if you get curious about your emotions and you think of them as information, then you can be like, well, actually, let me learn a little bit about that. Yeah. And for me, when I was diagnosed with stage four cancer, I have it in my lungs and my liver. I was like, uh, maybe I'll get curious about these organs so I can do what? Figure out how they work so I can do what? Figure out how I can care for them. Mm, oh, I love that. And that's what it's about. So how do you care for deep grief? A lot of different ways. And you know, everybody is unique. Everybody's got their own path. So I'm going to share some things that I talk about in the book and some of the things that have helped me. First and foremost, is just the awareness of what we're talking about, that you can't amputate any of your emotions and expect to be whole. You don't have to like this emotion. You don't have to be like, yay, let's just go out and have beers, grief, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a beer with grief. How about a glass of wine? You like can definitely nice... <laughs> have a, a nice Pinot, you know, whatever your, your you. thing is. <laughs> My point is, is that you don't have to be very excited about this. But you, the point is that you are willing to you're willing to start on a journey with getting to know this emotion and getting to allow this emotion, because as much as emotions are information, emotions are also energy. Yeah. And this is so up your alley. When energy gets stagnant and it has no place to go, what happens is, is we start to become less vibrant. So well right? said. Yeah. And it could also be that we become, that we start to develop illnesses and, you know, or blockages in our life and our well being and our abundance and our relationships. And so if we take the idea that emotions are information and then we expand it to energy, then we know that the, First thing for us to do is one, have that awareness. The second thing for us to do is figure out ways to release that energy. Okay. And is that done always through your mind or do you do it through the body? Because you had a couple of recommendations in the book that yeah. I thought were unique. Absolutely. So we can't always solve the problems of the mind with the mind. Yes. How many times have you, Mindy, or anybody else out there listening you're going to bang in your head and trying to figure out the solution. And you're like, ah, oh, I'm stuck. Yep. And that's very common. And so, of course, we need support. I think it's so vital if you're going through a big transition in life. You know, basically, I talk about these griefs as like those moments where you feel like you're in a rupture. Life has changed in an instant. Mm -hmm. The rug is pulled out from under you. You feel like you're picking up the pieces. It's great to get support. For me, that's in the form of therapy. I yeah. do need somebody to talk to and somebody to process with. But going back to the idea that we can't always solve the problems of the mind with the mind, Mind, movement in our body creates movement in our life, right? We yes. literally, sometimes we just need to change the channel. And I'm not saying go out and be a marathon runner, but if that's your thing, great. What I'm saying is, is that sometimes the healthiest thing to do is to find a way to come back to the present moment, that present moment awareness, because mm. with grief and loss, oftentimes we're stuck in fear and anxiety. Mm, there's other emotions there. Yes, especially those. And there's more to come, believe me. It's going to get, it's, it's going to get messier before it gets more magnificent. <laughs> yeah. 
it's magnificent. That's what I heard. It gets magnificent. It can. It absolutely okay. can. But if we're stuck in fear and we're stuff, stuck in anxiety, then you know what happens in the body, all the cortisol, the stress hormones, right? We know what that feels like. And if you think about fear and anxiety, it's oftentimes a ruminating about what could happen or what should have happened or what didn't mm. happen. Mm. And when we're stuck in those thought loops, it's hard to know, it's hard to even be in our bodies, right? We're in out of body experiences telling ourselves stories. So, so for, for me, that might mean breath work. For me, that might mean meditation. For me, that might mean taking a walk, changing the channel, changing my physical state so that I can reset my emotional state. I love that. Well, and on that, do we have a level of The Body Keeps the Score, which is one of my favorite books, because I do believe that our, you know, if you take Bruce Lipton's work where our body has absorbed all of these emotions and now it's holding on to that and it affects our cellular performance, you know, I I think we never go to the body to heal an emotional wound. We never think about the body mm. as holding on to emotions. We only think of like maybe our heart or our mind, but we don't think of the cells of our body. So my experience with things like breath work and EMDR, which you put in the book, are about accessing these memories of the body. But when you access them, you don't know what you're getting. All the memories might come up, which is another theory you had in your book, which is once, and you just said it about your therapist, is like once you tap into that grief and you come at it from from this body and mind level, you're going to get all the griefs. And then how do you handle that? Well, so we don't frighten everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> well said, well said. <laughs> this could happen, right? More, more things can come up. And I think they're up because they're, there's these emotions are so proud of you. These emotions are mm. so psyched that you're willing to work with them. They're mm -hmm. so psyched that you're willing to drop some of the walls and the barriers and the blockages that have kept you small mm. or kept you hurting, right? And so yeah. I, I have this, I'm very visual, so I imagine like, you know, that all of the little boo-boos and aches and pains or some of them are like, oh my gosh, you guys, come on. She's ready to feel. Let's go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. Is that what's happening? Because that's how it feels for sure. That, that is sometimes what's happening and if we just continue to anchor ourselves in flow in the peace and the freedom the simplicity the ease that we want to feel then we know that there are these barnacles and these disturbances in the force and this residue that if you tap into it wouldn't it feel so amazing each and every one of us listening we probably yes i'm saying this can can think about a few things that come to mind wouldn't it be so amazing if you started to feel those knots unravel yeah. started to feel the freedom that is is waiting for you yes it is